Steve, the world is running. They are they are in fear. There's um, they're there's in panic. L- look what um, look what a virus. And I do believe it came from the lab. I, I do believe that at, at that least, at, at the very least, um, look look what this has done. And I'm going to say this: it's a scratch compared to the red horse, black horse, pale green horse that's just around the corner. What we're talking about right now is the waves before the tidal wave. We're just in the wave, and and this is this is bad enough. But this is what Scripture gave to us. For we can go back three thousand years to Psalm chapter two. We can go back to Isaiah. We can go back to you know two thousand years. But Jesus had this very end of days thing down very clearly, uh, which included pestilence. Uh, the very word lomos means disease, pest, pestilence, plague, pandemic, and then with that includes uh, terror and the rest. So. I think it's very important that we understand the spiritual backdrop. As as you've said, yes, I, I'm screaming out for 10 years now on radio that you opened the door for me uh, on on live radio like this in, in this avenue. So I'm, I'm saying that this biblical picture of the development of dark powers is toxic to the world. Uh, that agenda is, you know, what we see as far as deep state, that's nothing compared to the deeper than the deep state, the mysterium, the shadow system uh, that the book of Daniel, book of Revelation 13 talks about. So this right here should be a massive wake-up call to the world. It should shock the world and shake the world. Uh, We're not seeing, uh, other than the president talking about prayers for healing and so forth right around Resurrection Sunday, we're not seeing the world turn to God. And we're we're seeing the world in confusion and blame shifting and everything, and we're going to see more of that. But Steve and Doug, my biggest concern is this is a scratch. This is a wave, and the tidal waves are coming. As you just mentioned, the unprecedented hope Jesus brings. Now is the time. The darker it gets, the greater this light of Jesus, the truth, victory over death, seeing God face to face, indestructible immortality, knowing this. Uh, so we have that explicit message to preach in power. I also believe, as much as I believe the dark side is going to be operative beyond any scale in all collective human history, this goes way beyond the Old Testament, what we're dealing with now um, and what we're going to be dealing with. So, But we got to remember, too, God is going to respond. Two witnesses, think in terms of what God's going to do, including the wrath of God unleashed on the beast kingdom. I have emphasized the four horsemen, seal one, seal two, seal three, seal four. Seal five, the slain, the martyrs from the red horse, black, all that that occurred. Look at seal six and seal seven. The, 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 here God gives us a picture of the satanic elite, the eyes wide open, shut, you know, uh, the, those kind of people. They're going, to be st- they're going to be hiding in the rocks. They're going to be in great fear. See, they know this dark side. They, this dark side knows their time is short. All of this is about them trying to save their tail. They're trying to save what they have because they're moving it all the way to Armageddon. They want to stop Jesus because in his return, he's coming to do what he said he would do, annihilate all of this. He's going to end this. Doesn't anybody want this to end? Death to end, disease to end, pedophiles to end, you know, rape, all, all of the war stuff, all the corruption everywhere. Don't we want this to end? Well, that's in the hands of Jesus, as you said, Steve. Uh, we, 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 got our, we have to understand again, the church, and I'm saying this as a pastor that loves the body of Christ, and I'm in the body of Christ, but for 40 years, I'm saying there's been a massive disconnect on spiritual warfare that would have training, teaching, prophetic teaching. When I go to conferences, we've been to you know 120 conferences in, in 10 years, 10, 11 years. I constantly ask everybody, how many here know what your authority is in Jesus? Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. Not, over 90% did not. How many here know what the content of the red horse, not just say the red horse, but what is the content of that prophecy? It has everything to do with us, everything to do with um, the, the first broad strike when the Antichrist is released. Steve, I'm telling you, 99, 99% did not know. So 
this lack of um, the, the, the power of the Word of God is what brings the lack of the power of God. It's like what Jesus said at one time to dead religion. You neither know the Word of God nor the power of God. Now, what we need to do immediately, this is good news, we can immediately stop all this um, skimming of, 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 of Scripture and skimming of our, our lives. We are to be the most supernaturally empowered, um, faith-filled, incredibly uh, hearing God, doing great exploits even, as, as the book of Daniel refers to the end of days. There's going to be believers that are going to do great exploits and tremendous things are going to be done. But, it, but it's, it's, a two, it's a double-edged thing. On the one side, the worst of the worst, and I'm going to say it again, hundreds of millions to the point of 2.8 billion are going to die in less than, in less than a seven-year period maybe a three and a half year period when all this breaks loose. So when we tell everybody what you're experiencing now, as bad as it is, it's just the little waves. Um, you're looking at the little waves or maybe like the tsunami, you know, like the tide, where all the water sucked down. There's just movement. We're looking at the movement, but look further out just a little ways away connected to all this is the massive, massive tidal wave. So, Steve, Doug, urgency. Um, the power of the gospel is the same. Jesus is the same. People can get healed today. There's no question. We've dealt with so many demons over the last 30, well, 40 years. I'm sick of them. We know astounding authority. We know what we're all about. The body of Christ, the gates of hell are not going to prevail. Whatever's coming out of them, we must understand who we are and I'm going to say again, we are the most empowered, backed, supernatural people on the planet beyond all of what I've seen in the underworld. But they are here. They are here. And, and because millions will embrace the lie, that becomes the gateway. That becomes the right. Uh, you, were, you know, we're talking not only the release of the Antichrist that brings uh, wave after wave of their plot and plan. It's that side that opens the abyss. It's that side that pushes towards Armageddon. It's their idea. And in all these cases, God limits, God strikes, God hits, and ultimately, praise God, annihilation of this. God keeps setting up the world. Even when the, the, the flood of darkness comes, God strikes back, God draws, God sets up the world for salvation. And, and that's, that's the news. What I want to say about the body of Christ and being a local pastor for 30 years too, and I've been doing this now for 14 years outside of that, uh, what we realize now is that the church has been, as you mentioned, Sardis was a dead church. That's we got to understand biblically that's a possibility, dead. So the dead church, though, is where no works of Jesus, no power, no demonstration, no reality. How could it be that we can millions can go to local gatherings on Sunday mornings, <coughs> have all the meetings that they're having, no invitations, no salvations, no healing, nobody there to pray for healing, obviously no deliverance issues, uh, and, 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 and desire to be so relevant, yet it is one of the most boring places then. So when we walk into a church and there's no expressed manifest presence of the Spirit of God, there's no interaction joyfully there's no joy of the lord that is our strength there's 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 no invitation and 25 people getting saved no 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 35 altar counselors to pray for healing give a word of knowledge uh pray over individuals nobody there with authority to cast out a demon uh no demonstration here's what i've been saying and, and i have a new book that's supposed to be coming out right now in, in the context of all it's called um Becoming the powerhouse God intended. The premise of that is the book of Acts. Everything you see there, that book is a field manual for these last days. As you just mentioned, the Western Christian church is so abnormal that it thinks it's normal. So when the subnormal becomes the norm and thinks that's the norm, this deadness, this emptiness, that all the miracles, all the angels, all the powers of God, all when God did an earthquake and let Paul and Silas out of prison, all of that's past stuff we just read about. 
No, see, it's in my paradigm, in my belief, every bit of that is today. Every bit of that is right now. Don't don't we realize we need everything God has? Don't we realize that in this hour that we're living in, every ounce of all that God is, and I'm going to say this, I don't listen to the skeptics, I don't listen to cessationists, I don't listen to the dead, I'm going to listen to the living, the living God. And, and I'm going to tell you right now that, that, um, that God is able, and I believe, I believe that some of these events will, will make a lot of individuals run to Jesus. They'll remember what they heard 30 years ago. They'll remember what their dad and mom and grandfather and grandmother said. There's many that will, when there's nowhere else to go, when there's bodies around them, when, there's, when, when everything is collapsed, they're going to turn. So I, I do believe that's a good, a good thing. But I don't care how much hell is on the face of the planet. Like David that ran onto the field, saw Goliath, and he ran towards him. I believe the body of Christ can become that powerful. Uh, this is not cliche stuff, Steve, Doug. This is what I really believe. I believe that there's going to be many that are going to be able to run onto the field. They're going to engage. There's going to be believers. Listen, let's get the heads up now. There's going to be believers by the hundreds of thousands worldwide that will lose their lives. Has, it, has nobody read the Fox's Book of Martyrs? Has nobody read the sequel, By Their Blood? Has, you know, I'm not running out the street saying, martyr me. I, I, didn't, I didn't chase down Satanists and have guns put at me and knives put at me and you know, blood brought to my door and doorstep and everything else over the years. Psalm 91 is true. God has protected me all these years. That underworld doesn't think anybody's going to come after them. I say the body of Christ raging in the power of God, becoming bold as a lion, like that picture of that lion. I love the picture of the lion. Because the, the righteous truly are as bold as a lion. Let the, let, let the scumbags run. Let, let, the, let the, those demonized and maguses and wizards, let them know that we're coming for them. And if we're taken out during, the wet, you know, during this time, I've told before, I told my wife, here's what I told my wife, Steve, about death and dying. If for any reason God permits and they get me before it's time, you know, before I, I've always felt I'm going to be here to the very end. Um, I always felt that way. I still do. But if they get me, I just want just just it, it, the only the only <laughs> the only thing I want everybody to know is I beat you. I got there first. I'll see you in a little while. <laughs> we, we've got to realize how real this is. Yes. So when we talk about Red Horse, let me mention this again. The book that I've written, Black, Black Awakening, Rise of the Satanic Super Soldier, it's over 600 pages. It is about Psalm chapter 2. It is about the rise of the dark side. It, it, it gives a tremendous focus on the Red Horse prophecy in Revelation 6. And it takes us all the way to Armageddon 1919, when the Therion, the Antichrist, gets on the field of human history. And the largest military, super soldier, augmented, uh, demonized, demon-empowered, the most powerful, you know, artelect-type weapons in human history. You know why they're going to be there? They're there. Here's, here's the perspective we need to realize. They are so scared. They are so in a frenzy. They know their time is so short. The entire reason for Armageddon is to try to stop what they know is going to happen. They're going to be annihilated. They're going to be ended. Chapter 20, Revelation 20, Satan is going to be chained by one singular angel thrown into the abyss for a thousand years. This is our victory. This is a time for our victory. This is the time when God's going to step in. Yes, the dark side is going to do everything. And I think every believer needs to understand the Red Horse Prophecy, which the underworld has, has called that back as, as far as the early 90s. And I'm talking Fort Bragg Psy Warrior. I'm talking very person that spoke. You know, I, I I can go on and on about those those stories of people that we've engaged <laughs> over the years, uh, all the way to Germany, all the way to Scot. I mean, Scotland, Germany, France, Poland, wherever I've been, all all the same. Um, Steve, I met the top when we were in Scotland. I met the top guy in all of England, a barrister who's been in who's been in the Parliament for numbers of years. He was a Singaporean uh, soldier. Uh, native, but he's also native to, to to England. So he's in London. He comes and speaks on the ritual abuse, the massive numbers of ritually abused in, in all of England. I never met him before. I did not know him. He's never read my book. He doesn't know anything about me. I walked up to him, Steve, and I said, 
Sir, you know about all these satanic programming, the alteration, the, the, the goal to change DNA, all that. You know this, right? Yes. You've dealt with it 25 years. Yes. Here's the question I ask him. Why are they here in England? His immediate response, they are here to collapse the United Kingdom, and they're here to be the ones that usher in the Antichrist in a new, a new regime. Instantly he said that. That's true in Germany. That's true in Australia. That's true in New Zealand. That's why I'm saying all prophecy has boots on the ground. When prophecy spoke about the forerunner of Jesus, John the Baptist, he eventually was in the womb of, of Elizabeth. He was actually on the field of human history. All of this has reality. So the broadest deception in human history, the nations saber-rattling and, and rising up against each other, the, the, um, the earthquakes and environmental changes. And again, Luke 21, this is very important, pestilence and terror, and it goes on with a few more. That's not even all, I'm not even mentioning all of these. So we have from the king of heaven, he, he's come to bring the victory. We are born into victory. We are destined for that astounding victory. There'll be a day that we are in indestructible. We are the new race of immortals, Steve. We are the new race of immortals. Transhumanists can't scratch the surface. They can't even define it. We will have bodies that are indestructible, eternal, immortal, and we're going to be able to see God face to face. And the final thing is we read the end of the book of Revelation. The father stretches out his hand and he wipes away the final tears of the old order. This is about victory. This is about ending. All of the next number of years is about finally ending the dark side and triumphantly. So let's, we can live triumphantly. Let them be scared. Let them hide in the rocks. Let them fear. Let them cry out, oh, the face of the lamb. They're the ones going to be crying and hiding and running um, and, and doing all they do. God's not willing that anybody would perish. I mean, truly, he would rather they turn. That's how I feel. That's what I preach to every Satanist, every elitist, magus, wizard, whoever they are. Um, but we must realize biblical prophecy, it's not going to change uh, as far as uh, what's going to be happening ultimately. And the Red Horse event, peace is taken from the entire earth, the whole earth. The Greek word, arene, uh, the cessation of hostilities, instantly Peace is taken from the whole earth. Amen. Now, I'm going, to take, I'm going to tell you what I believe. I believe when the Antichrist is released, been on conquest, whether it takes him a few months or whatever else, he's the one that gives the order. He's the one that triggers the red horse prophecy and the black horse and the pale. And, and so we're seeing a sequence. So when peace is taken from the whole earth, all we read in Scripture is all of a sudden people begin to slaughter one another. The Greek word svadzo, not the word in, for, in, 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 in reference to um, pale green horse war. That's a different word altogether. This is why I think many people miss this. Svadzo is about animal butchery or ritual animal ritual butchery. Look up the word svadzo. It has, it's not the same as general warfare. It is a bloody, ritualistic, brutal unleashing where people are all of a sudden slaughtering one another. And that's exactly what the troops of Antichrist are trained for when they're triggered. They have their targets. Steve, you're a target. Doug, you're a target. They already know who their targets are. I'm going to tell you explicitly. Um, do we think for a moment with the Antichrist being alive out there that he doesn't have his pulse on everything out there? You think he doesn't know who he needs to get rid of? <laughs> when the communist Chinese came down upon South Koreans, they knew who they wanted to get rid of first. This, we can go to the Nazis and all this, but again, this is unprecedented. They know who they want to deal with. They know who they want to eliminate. They know what they need to do. The Red Horse thing, I'm talking hundreds of millions in a global slaughter Beyond any television program, please understand this. This is what is coming. Um, this is now where we as believers say, hey, I'm now reading Daniel chapter 11. 
There's going to be believers that are going to turn many to right, you know, righteousness, uh, salvation. There's going to be there's going to be believers that are going to do great exploit because what those who know their God, Steve, you know your God, Doug, you know your God. Um, you and I and and many believers may see the greatest interventions that God has ever done in all of human history in light of the dark side doing its apex and culmination in the world that we're living in. Let's, let's be very, very clear about this. What we've seen in the past, what we've seen in the Old Testament, what we've seen in World War II, what we're seeing right now, uh, again, I'm saying, doesn't Jesus said what is coming is unprecedented. It's off the maps of human history. Amen. It is beyond anything. In, if we can get this in our minds, what God is going to do is going to be off chart. I mean, we're going to see God do uh, astounding things. I believe like Acts chapter 8, when Philip was transported from one place to another in the context of evangelism, I'm not a cessationist. I'm not going to be a skeptic. If God wants to move me from out front here over to Pittsburgh or somewhere else while I'm preaching the gospel, praise God. If, if God's going to raise dead people, praise God. If God's going to bring a, angelic visitation into a, into a prison and open the doors, praise God. I'm telling all believers right now, everything you see in the book of Acts, believe God for, trust God for. I, I've been using this one verse all of this year so far, Ephesians uh, 3.20. Now unto him was able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond. Greek word, hooper ek periusu. We cannot calculate. We cannot calculate in our brain. We cannot calculate in our imagination the astounding things God will do. And I believe it glorifies God. I pray uh, always the content of Acts 4, that God stretch out his hand, that God heal people, that God bring sign and wonder. I understand there's satanic ones, but who's going to be able to best deal with the satanic ones? Spirit-filled, power-filled, people that know their God are going to be able to confront the satanic stuff, the satanic counterfeit. So my my thing again still is to say, if we don't grab a hold of this moment in history, if the church in America specifically continues to stay subnormal and think that that's normal, they're going to be it's going to be it's going to be devastation. I mean, it already is in a sense right now. Um, it, it really is in a real sense right now because. When churches are gathering, and Steve, the, the average gathering of a church, whether 100 or 1,000 or 10,000, the average intercessory prayer time in the church is 11 to 12 seconds <laughs> with no warfare prayer. Mm. We could have been gathering like Acts chapter 4 and unleashing 30 minutes of massive, powerful, Spirit of God-guided prayer that brings answers right in the sanctuary. We could have been using that authority for decades, praying against the drug lords, praying against the human traffickers, praying against the abortionists, praying against the corruption. We could have been so powerful, like the wicked queen of Scotland, she feared the prayers of John Knox more than an invading army. Believers right now, Right today, the biggest call above everything Steve's telling you, what I'm telling you, become the most powerful believer in Jesus ever. Fast some. Take time. You gotta spend time with God. You gotta talk to God. You gotta listen to the Spirit of God. You gotta surrender. No more grieving the Spirit of God. No more quenching the Spirit of God. You've got to give complete surrender. You gotta welcome the hand of God in the context of everything. God did not leave us here helpless while Satan brings all his emissaries and manifestations and counterfeits on the planet. Uh, none of that is superior to the greater is he who's in us. None of that is superior, but it takes believers, all those miracles in the book of Acts, people raising the dead, signs and wonders, people being healed, all those things in the book of Acts came through re redeemed people. All those miracles, all those signs and wonders, it came through believers. Uh, that's how God operates. He, he brings them through the believers. And they were protected. And I'm going to say again, if we don't take Revelation 12, as you've already mentioned this in the very beginning, they what, what, what was their victory? How did they overcome the dragon, the full force of the dark side? By the testimony of Jesus and the right? 
by, by the word of God and the testimony of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb. So the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of Jesus, they overcome the dragon. They did not concern, they were that concerned about their life to shrink from death. I think believers need to become so powerful that we don't shrink from death. We're not out there trying to get dead. <laughs> um, we're out there preaching the gospel, and that's what I'm going to do. But let me tell you something very important. When Stephen was being martyred and his face shone like an angel, in the book of Peter talks about that being the spirit of God and of glory. And on his way out of this world, he saw at the right hand of majesty, Jesus. That's astounding to me. Can we get it through our heads that we're all going to die at some point? Um, if, if Jesus wasn't coming for another 30 years, I don't think I want to be 100 years old. Well, it would take 40 years. Um, I don't think I want to be 100 years old running around. I, I don't know about you, but um, I'm not sure that just hanging on to this life is the most important thing. If we surrender, you know, Jesus said, if, we want to, if all those who want to save their lives, you're going to lose it. But those who lose their lives for his sake in the gospel, we're going to find that. And I'm saying, give everything to Jesus. Trust him like you've never trusted him before. Get so saturated and filled and clothed and listen to the Spirit of God. Get so yielded. Victory over the flesh, victory over the enemy, victory over the fallen world, and powerful boldness that turns you, um, that, that the other side is afraid of your approach. There's prayers that can be prayed today that can still touch. Every answer to prayer is an intervention. Every time God answers, that's an intervention. And when there's no praying, well, obviously, look what happens. When the church is not this massive live praying body, well, you're not going to see the, the, the whole building shake with power because that's exactly what they ask for. Would to God that we see that building shake with power not just a you know man-made you know fracking you know earthquake. So we 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 must know it's it's again for us as believers, there's two sides to this whole thing. The most devastating times in human history. There's no way to go back now, Steve. We're not gonna go back. We're not going back to the 50s. Uh we're it's just not gonna happen. I'm a dad, I love my daughter, though she's 29 now, like she's my little daughter, but I got a granddaughter I get to see four days a week. And I, I deal with blood and gut stuff constantly. Biggest burden I have, I can't get to everybody. I can't get to all the people that, that are begging for help. Part of that issue is it makes me a little bit outraged. Again, you're right about what if we had a million believers, just like Philip in Acts chapter 8, Amen. spirit-filled, soul-winning, going into a demonized city and cleaning the clock in a sense, saved, healed, delivered, the whole city's full of joy. The whole atmosphere changes. And I'm going to say right now, real believers, you carry that with you. Carry it into the uh, hospital. Carry it into the uh, police station. You, you've, you've got a living Savior inside of you, and if you're living in that kind of biblical New Testament book of Acts faith, and you know your giftings, and you know the power of the Spirit of God, and you're listening, and you've prayed up heavy over the day already, and you walk into that fire station, you walk into that office, you walk into that school, you are carrying, you're literally a carrier of the King and Kingdom of kingdom of God. It's not a matter of talk. And it can happen right in a classroom. It can happen right down the hallway. Nothing should stop us. That's our mission. All authority has been given to Jesus, and we've been released to do this. And so today we can go out. Tomorrow we can go out. And I'm saying, yes, the only way you're going to begin to win souls is start doing it and begin to see the power of God Acts 9.22, when Saul of Tarsus got saved, filled with the Spirit, and he began to launch out. Then it says a few verses down, he became more and more powerful. So we don't, you know, it's about bringing the body of Christ up to par. Powerful, strong, experienced, um, won't back down, that kind of body of Christ. And then launching out like never before. If we really believe prophetically, I mean, even if I was, even if we were to sit here and say, well, we don't believe Jesus is coming back for 20 years, does that mean to relax? Do we not have a mission? 
do we not have a call to reach, go to the highways and byways? You know, I've been to bars and biker bars and gay bars and down the streets and up, up. Uh, that's that's been the challenge of a lifetime. Uh, even even when it came to the Satanists and Druids and trying to find their meetings and engage them and praying and get you know that kind of thing. Power encounters in the Book of Acts when it was a direct. Remember, um, Elymas, the Jewish sorcerer, mm-hmm. the power encounter. Who went blind, Paul or the sorcerer? The sorcerer went blind. The hand of God came against him. Paul spoke it right out. That presence, that power, that immediacy, that's ours right now. That's ours right now, wherever we go. So as we launch out and do it again and do it again and do it again and see it again and see it again, then believers become very competent, very confident in the Lord, very powerful and experienced. Then they know like James chapter 5 when the Spirit of God says, hey, we're just like Elijah. Who are we just like? We're just like Elijah who prayed and shut the heavens for three years. How powerful was that? Um, when the powerless, quiet, subnormal church is out there for so long, as you've said, it has become, I, I guess millions think, well, that's the norm. No, it's not. Break away. Break away from that backslidden, that dead you turned. That's the good news in even Laodicea. Jesus gave an invitation. Anybody that is there, that does want to have fellowship, that does want this, anybody that wants the power of God, the magnitude of God, uh, we're talking prayer and praise that allows an earthquake to occur in open jail cells. We're talking about Mary's house praying, and an angel of God is sent to let Peter out of prison. The angel walks in. The, the iron bar gates opened all by themselves. This is the God we serve. This is the Savior we serve. Hell is unleashing. More than everything in human history, dark side wise, is coming. And the world is in trouble. We have victory. The end of all of it is coming, and we're here to help that. And we're going to be out of here at some point, but don't think it's right away. It's good news that we're, we've not been left just to sit around and kind of hang on. Um, we're here to do historic and, and, and we're, we're, we're part of a kingdom that brings the extraordinary. It, God does all the miracles, all the signs, all the wonders through redeemed individuals. That's true in the Old Testament too. So I think that's one of the big things that we need to continue to remember as we live in this day. So every time you think in terms of it's getting darker, it's worse, only means we have greater opportunity. The, the, the light of this message of Jesus, the person of Jesus. I mean, think in terms of um, when you talk about me being on the field, you got to understand I love study. I love doing radio because I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do when I do that radio broadcast. But uh, being on the field right now, and I can't do a lot of that, uh, it has been the most exciting place on the planet when I'm with team members, the providence of God, how we meet people, how the Spirit of God, like with Philip, go over there into that cafe and start talking to that lady. All those events that occur, stories upon stories. I, I don't know if I'll, I'll have time to write about them and talk about all of them, but that's part of the reality of this. To see God open doors, to see God protect you, to see God engage, to see powerful individuals that have shown up for one thing, with their demons and their powers, they wanted to challenge us. But they were blown out of the waters by the authority and power of the Lord Jesus Christ. we got to remember the demons still tremble just at his name alone. That's vital for us in this in this hour that we're living. It's interesting that you mentioned about comments and things in the in the in the in the sky in a sense, because in Luke's gospel again, it's very important. Jesus talked about deception. He talked about nation against nation. He talked about fake Christs. He talked about earthquakes. He talked about pestilence and the terrors that strike fear to the world. Next one down, Steve. The events that will happen in the skies, extraordinary events in the skies. Jesus said this. He's way ahead of all of us. He's <laughs> way ahead of the intel agencies. He's way ahead of everything. We get this content inside of us. 
Peter had that content of biblical prophecy inside so that the day of Pentecost, when the power of the Holy Spirit was poured out, he was able to stand up and say, this is that which the prophet Joel spoke about. So when we look at, uh, and we have that content inside, word of God and power of God go together. Word of God and the works of God always go together. And they're meant to do that. We should, we should understand all kinds of things are going to be happening in the skies because Jesus said, Luke's Gospel 21, you get those things down, you're going to see all of those things, and those are leading right up to all of those. We're in the Odin. We're in the times of sorrow. We are in that now. We have been for some time. So the Odin, the turbulent, painful travail, which makes the world cry out and wonder what in the world's going on. Steve hit it right on the nail just a moment ago. We have the answers. We have the answers to give. This is We're now coming to the end of history. Just like all of us will have the end of history in our own lives. Uh, there's going to be an end of history. Uh, thousands and thousands all over the world have lost their lives in this so-called COVID thing. Who knows how many regular influenza, abortion. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of other ways that people have died, and, and, it, and, and that's the end. The wages of sin, of, of sin is death. And, and that's the me- part of the message is, is, is now grabbing a hold of the world and saying, now please listen. Because Jeremiah 29, 11 is true. Because John 3, 16 and 3, 17 is true. Because nobody loves you more. Nobody desires you more. Nobody knows you better. And the necessity of salvation is here. You've got to get saved or you will lose your soul. You will lose your life. Talk about the fear of this right now. Forget that for a moment. Hell and being lost forever. God calls and summons every single human being to repent, to come back. We sinned. We messed up. We screwed up. We opened the door to all of this. We, the human race, have opened the door up to all of this. The wages of that sin, the, the reaping of what we've sown, and yet the dark side's presence and deception. So we must come to terms with this. If there are those who are going to be arrogant and stand to their own own eternal um, fatal choice. So God summons you. God calls you. God is not willing. I always say this on the radio. Nobody wants you more than God does, than Jesus does. There's nobody that desires to bring you home and and save you. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But to your point, Doug, I believe, as Steve has already said too, this this is um, is another step down. There's no way to go backwards now. Uh, when it comes to global economy, global relationships, you know they're saying now it'll be until 2022 that we can maybe begin to shake hands with people, <laughs> not wear masks anymore. I think that we're, we're, we're so focused on this, what the governments of the world, what the masses of the world don't know is bigger hits are coming. So I'm going to say... Not that everybody's going to love this, but in this end of days issue, bigger hits, greater devastations, not just pan- not just pandemics, as bad as that might be, but terror, things in the sky, persecutions. Read the Gospel of Luke 21 and look at what Jesus said would be the sequence of these things on a global scale that spells the very, very end of history. Uh, We must live that way right now. We must live that way. There's no way it's going to be normal. And what we're experiencing, I'll say what I said in the beginning, Doug, what we're experiencing now are the waves, crashing waves, but further on out where it's darker and gloomier looking, the tidal wave is coming. The tidal wave is coming. The moment the restrainer, who who restrains with a superior force, but doesn't strain, he who restrains, he's holding back one individual, Anthropos Anamos, the man of lawlessness. He, He holds back the apocalypse of the one individual who is the key that's going to unleash everything on the planet. When that occurs, 
when that when that time actually does occur, and I think we're at that at, at the bulging point of that. I think that the Antichrist is actually pushing, 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 because the restrainer is a restrainer. He is restraining something, someone, from that all coming out. And when that occurs, I'm going to say again, for all who are watching, all of you who helped Doug and everybody else to keep these broadcasts and everything else, I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a day when that day comes. Could be six months, could be a year. I don't know for sure. When that day comes, um, there's no internet. When 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 he's released, when that when that one's released on conquest, and when he gives the orders, because of all that is prepared, that red horse event will occur. The world has never seen that. This goes beyond war. This goes beyond genocide. This is you're talking satanic global genocide, and then black horse and pale green horse, with possibly, in the period of three and a half years, some some believe it goes into six years of this, two point eight billion. I have I and I I understand that it outrages me. It bugs me. So, I want everything God has now. I want God to give every single thing He has. I want. I'm saying. Let's understand what's coming, and everything has changed, and everything we're going to see is a is cataclysm, is chaos, is rumblings, and it's all going to continue to point to uh, the restrainer being removed and all of that coming out. And yet, God's going to God's going to release in all of this the expectation of God today. I don't expect it just tomorrow, but I expect it today. Is He not the same today? Uh, so that's what I'm going to believe God for day by day by day. That's what we have to believe for on these broadcasts, whether TV or radio and all that we do, whether an entire conference that is going to be unleashed in which, Steve, we will pray the power of God. You remember Paul at the lecture hall of Terenius? He wasn't able to leave and go anywhere. But extraordinary miracles were done as he unleashed the message for, I think it was two years that he was there. And incredible things did occur as that gospel and message and word of God was taught from a locality when he couldn't get out among everybody. So I think it's important for us to realize that, that, a, that, a, that a live-streamed event like this can have uh, a extraordinary anointing power, might, miracle, signs, spiritual giftings done correctly, that will bring impact, no less than this show, no less than the importance of this moment in history, uh, Doug, that you've, you've, you've brought all this together um, to, to, to speak to the world, to give an answer to the world. It's not going to get better. For the world, it's going to get worse. And for us, we're going to see the hand of God like we've never seen. Subnormal or weak believers that have not been built and equipped to where they're supposed to be, they don't want to look at the darkness or acknowledge it, and they can't see and hear what God is doing. That's part of the trouble. And I think right now, as you're mentioning this, as it was in the days of Noah, Jesus did not say, except for the Nephilim, except for that massive other side of things, he didn't, that's kind of, again, that Western rationalistic, you know, take that out of the, the concept of uh, what Jesus was talking about. He said, as it was in those days, they were so bad, so corrupted, so enormous that a flood, a weapon from God, needed to come in and save the remnant of humanity. What did Jesus talk about concerning the end of days? Unless those days be shortened, if we don't understand how devastating the dark side, how in trouble the fallen world is, how massive, to the, to the edge of human extinction, uh, to the edge of environmental extinction, at least the feeling of it, the fear of it, the sense of it, Jesus steps in uh, to shorten those days. He, all, 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 Steve has, all Steve has said during this entire two hours right now, Doug, Jesus 
the hero of humanity, Jesus, the Savior, Jesus, the Deliverer, Jesus, um, God in human flesh, Jesus, you know, is coming again. I, I want this perspective to be um, left, one left thing, is all of the stuff I've studied concerning the end of days. I think a lot of people have the idea that it's, it's the heyday for the dark side. Here's, what I, here's how I see it. It's not the heyday. It's their last attempt. It's their scurrying, frenzied way of trying to hold on. Um, they're, they're trying to hold on to what they have, and they're, they're, they're doing all they can to stop Jesus in his return because they aim the weapons into the sky, Revelation 19, 19. So really what it is, a defeated other side, a fearful other side, a frenzied other side, that knows their time is short, is going to do all they're going to, you know, they're going to do everything they can possibly do um, to, to save their tails. But the verdict is done. Victory is coming. Christ is returning. The end of that kind of history is here, you know, coming. That can happen into our lives right now. Anybody that's lost, any, you know what the Bible says? If you don't have the Spirit of God inside of you, you're none of his. Romans 8, you go go read it in Romans 8. I don't care if Anglican, Catholic, bat, whatever your background, if you don't have the Spirit of God inside, you're none of his. Romans 8 will define the Spirit of adoption, being born of the Spirit of God, knowing God personally, the Spirit of God witnessing inside that you're actually a child of God. That whole chapter that if God be for us, who's going to be against us? Nothing will separate us from the love of God that is in Christ. Not Nothing in the heavens, nothing earth, no demon, no angel, nothing will separate us. And, and Steve has made it very clear to everyone that salvation is necessary. You, you brought out it again and again. Right here, right now, at this moment, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. Whoever bows their knee to repent right now, and God does call you. He summons all of us. He summons you to repent and turn to the living Savior, letting Christ come in. Forgiveness come. The Spirit of God come in. Born the Spirit of God. The gift of of everlasting life to see God face to face. You don't have that, you lose it all.